This video will demonstrate how to use and create your own MIDI files in order to play them with a free MIDI player in variable speed and variable pitch. One of the advantages to MIDI files are, is that they are much smaller than audio files in general. I've created one already and this is the player that we're using called Speedy MIDI and there are quite a few different ones out there. This is a free open source on SourceForge, but let's demonstrate here real quick, then I'll show you how to set this up. So we have it at 50%, let's take it down to 30, and then I'm going to vary the speed a bit. As you can see, it can go up and down, and you can practice uh, a slower speed and try to work your way up. You can also, I'm going to turn this on, and then I'm going to show you how to change the pitch. I'll take it down just a little bit. get a variable speed that way and it's kind of a nice way to practice the MIDI information is very accurate this is a MIDI chart of the DAWs and the DITs and it plays as you can see it here let's take it up to 100 percent for a second and the MIDI creator we created uh, a MIDI file from text. It converts it to MIDI messages for note on and note off. And then this little guy here called Bipper is the one that actually takes that MIDI information and creates a sine wave tone just like a code practice oscillator. We're sending it to a filter since it uh, doesn't have any rise or fall time on it, so it's very has a lot of key clicks on it. Then we're sending it to this application that changes the pitch and we have a uh, guitar tuner application so we can see where we're at as far as frequency goes and then to the sound card we're using ASIO for all so that everything is done in low latency uh, and I'll go over all these links here in just a second the program itself is called Speedy MIDI the program that we're using to create uh, the actual file itself is called Morse MIDI this is what that looks like when you bring it up. And just go in here and say open a text file. And let's see if we have anything. So let's say there's one right there. We'll open it up. Then you can go up and down as far as the words per minute. So let's say 50. We'll start at 50. And let's go down to 25 for a second. 25. Okay. Now you can play it here too, but it's going to use Windows' own uh, MIDI synthesizer, which sometimes doesn't sound too good, so that's where we're doing it this way. File. Now we're going to save the MIDI file. I'll save it to the desktop. And let's call it Test MIDI File at uh, 25 words a minute. Okay, so now we can get out of here and there it is right there. So let's open up Speedy MIDI. Open up the file, go to the desktop. There's the test MIDI and we'll Enlarge this, and so there it is. Let's play it. That's as easy as it gets. And again, you can vary the speed if you want it to go slower. And we can go faster. MIDI information is very accurate and the pitch doesn't change and you can set the pitch with this 
application right here, M Freak Shifter. Works very well, up to plus or minus 100 hertz, and after that you get just some odd tones to it. It'll get a little harmonics if you try to go above that. Now this player is sending out through a MIDI port. And I'm using a virtual MIDI port called Loop MIDI. So it's taking all of this MIDI information, sending out the note on and note off, which is just the CW elements, just like you would be if you were using your paddles or a straight key. And it sends it through that MIDI cable called Loop MIDI. And I'm using port 1. And over here, we're using port 1 for the MIDI in, which goes to Bipper. And then the audio is in yellow, and the audio out goes to the engineer's filter, to the freak shifter, to the tuner, and then to the sound card itself, the audio out. And this is all pretty pretty easy to set up, really. This is the basic setup here. You have to download a few plugins, and those are my plugins. And you just load them to a file, tell this program where the file is, and to scan it and then they're all available. Now I'm using ASIO for all since it has a better uh, latency and it captures the sound card so that just this program uses it. It also has Windows Audio and Direct Sound and this is just the settings and it, for the MIDI end you tell it on MIDI 1 which one to use it. So I'm using Loop MIDI port 1 which is this over here port 1. Okay, all, all sounds a little complicated perhaps, but it, it really isn't that much of a deal. It's not that hard and are that difficult. So let's go to the websites and show you how to get all this stuff. This is the basic uh, information on what MIDI is. Here's where to download the Loop MIDI, so you get that virtual MIDI cable. Here's a download link, and all these will be in the show notes below the video. ISO for All is right here. This is where you can get Bipper, very simple uh, waveform generator that that operates, takes a MIDI input and keys it according to the note on and note off information, just like you would uh, that a keyer sends out to your rig. And this is the guitar tuner, so you can tell what frequency frequency you're at. And here is the website to get the filter and this has a lot of options on it so you can change the way the percussion sounds in other words the the attack and the release of the note has a little percussion to it and you can vary how much you want of that with this this is how to get the VST host which is where you put all your plugins and the MIDI connects to this and all the work is done inside here this should be well supported in the future this is in beta but it will be free after this too and this is from a very reputable company, FL Studio. And they've been around for a long time, and they're one of the top players as far as professional music goes. And it's nice for them to offer this at no charge. There's just a little news about this. Here's where to get the MIDI player, the variable speed MIDI player. And a little information about this. And to generate the Morse MIDI file itself, this is where I found a place to download it, right? On our famous DX Atlas. So again, all these will be in the show notes below the video. I just wanted to get this out. I think it's a, a great way to practice copying CW and try to incre increase your QRQ speed. Thanks for watching.